create jobs here locally by attracting green and environmentally friendly industry to East Lake County to help get people back to work again. To, and we need to strengthen our commercial tax base. I also understand that we need to do more to support law enforcement and code enforcement in order to turn things around and get things better. A little bit is not enough. I know if we work together, we can make Lee County, Lee County and especially Lehigh Acres better. Thank you for having me. I would ask the comments and clapping after. Do you support, uh, we'll start, uh, the first person to answer will be Sonny, we'll start with answer. Do you support reducing or eliminating impact fees? If so, how will growth pay for growth? I think the impact fees question is, it's, it's complex but simple. There are fire districts in the county that need impact fees. There are some that don't and their millage rates reflect that. I have a very simple philosophy in government, do you need it or do you want it? Growth has to pay for growth. The people that have lived here all these years in Lehigh aren't gonna be able to pay for the infrastructure that's coming because of the growth. So we have to have it, it's a double-edged sword, but how much is enough? Thank you. I'm not real happy with impact fees, but we have to examine it and see what is necessary and what is unnecessary. We also have to, I feel we should look at the impact fees also with the concern for what it's doing to the generation of small business industry, business and industry in our community, because it can mean the difference between starting and not starting for many small businesses. This is we need to address this as part of our overall economic plan for the future. We'll talk more later. Impact fees are that large chunk of money, like $14,000 when you build a new house. It goes to pay for your new roads because of the people moving in here, and it goes to pay for your schools and other things. If you don't pay the impact fees and you still have to have those things, who pays them? You pay them. I support impact fees. They make sense and we, we desperately need them and throw, throwing them out right now would be one of those baby and bath water things you don't want to do. Sean Seliger. I definitely do not support the elimination of impact fees. I think, my friends, the real question is why hasn't this community gotten their fair share of impact fees? Why hasn't this community gotten its fair share of services for tax dollars? And there's an answer for that, passive leadership in the District 5C. If I'm elected and given the opportunity to work for you and serve you, I, I would like the chance to be your advocate, work with my fellow board members in a collaborative manner to make sure that this community gets its fair share. What's going on at Lehigh Acres, it's not a political issue, it's really a moral issue to make sure that we make our community better. better. Thank you. What is your position on single member voting districts? Dick Kim, I support single member voting districts. I feel that we have progressed to the point where the people of the community should be electing the member, the person from their community to serve on the board. Uh, if you cannot serve on the Board of Commissioners and look at the overall county as well as the area you represent without being completely partial to your county, your local area, you probably shouldn't be on the board. You have to be able to do this. You have mayors all over the county who serve their various, various constituencies. 
they must also work together to do other things. So, yes, I support single member districts. Frank Mann again, just uh, barely six weeks ago, the Lee County Commission actually voted on the issue as to whether or not to put it on the ballot for the citizens to be able to vote for or against it. Uh, I was unfortunately in a minority of two. It was a three to two vote against putting it on the ballot. I wanted it on the ballot because it's a change in our fundamental county charter and y'all deserve the right to vote on it and nobody should take that away from me. And that is my position today and next month and four years from now. Let me say this, uh, I am not opposed at all to people having the right to choose if we proceed with single member districts. However, regardless of my personal feelings on the matter, I've always stood up throughout my career for the right to vote, for people to make their own decision. And I would not obstruct that process if I'm given the chance to be elected. I will say this, I also do believe that the whole single issue district movement, especially in this area, comes from a lack of representation. And I think part of the cure for that is to have a commissioner here that's willing and ready and able to open a local office in Lehigh Acres to work for you. And I'd like to have that opportunity. Thank you. I attended that forum with the uh, Board of County Commissioners Charter Review Committee. It was overwhelming that the Lehigh Acres residents wanted a single member district. Uh, I wish that the majority board went the other way and they would have gave us the right. And I, as I also support single member districts. What will you do to increase higher paying jobs in Lee County? Frank, man, again. Uh, there's no silver bullet that's going to answer that question and be the single solution. What we have to do is uh, collectively, with all areas of government, work together uh, to create an improved, increasingly improved quality of life. And that means everything. The better roads that I was just talking about we're able to do, but we've got to have a fine school system because those people that uh, want to hire the better people need very well trained people and people are prepared to take on these more technical jobs today. You got, we've got a great community college. We've got to stay on top of our uh, legislative delegation to make certain they do everything that we can, can do to continue to increase the effectiveness of, of our fine new university out there. Collectively, then, we will see the whole, and all the boats will float up together. Well, I think there is an answer to this, and if we notice, Sean Seliger, in the last two years, we haven't had those higher paying jobs here. We need to be ready and able and willing to get to work with the Office of Lee County Economic Development to bring light green, environmentally friendly industries to East Lee County. That's how we will get unemployment down from 7.5%, which is totally unacceptable. That's how we will, we will create an opportunity for local residents here to be able to get a high paying job or a quality job to get people back to work. And the best way to fight crime and drugs is a new job. And I'd like to be a part of the solution. Sonny Hahn, back with you. We need to create perhaps a, a partnership with not only the Board of County Commissioners and our, our elected officials and our school boards. Up in the mountains of North Georgia, they, they breed leadership, they breed uh, education, they breed their industry. Uh, healthcare is big up there. And they have health grants. And they work with their youth coming out of school and they, they do the nurses and the respiratory therapists and the physical therapy and the surgical scrub techs and they pay for their education, but they have a mandate where they have to stay in town. And they raise a family and they grow up and they do it. So healthcare is a big thing, it's a service industry. The baby boomers are coming down here. There's a trillion dollars worth of money coming down in the next 10 to 15 years, the baby boomers, and they're coming here and they've gotta be taken care of. And we have a great healthcare system here and great schools to do it. So we just gotta work with a partnership with the school board and local officials and get taken care of. Right now, I believe we are stuck in a boom and bust economy of construction and tourism. That's our major industries. We need to change it drastically. We have to vastly increase the amount of recruitment of businesses from other areas, whether it be up north, out west, wherever. Clean industry and 
bring it into the county, work with the schools, increase our ability to provide the workers needed for these industries. Also, we need to become a more friendly, business friendly county. Lee County should become the premier pro-business county in Southwest Florida. We should be working to help small business get started. If necessary, and we have areas where we can do this, make a small business nursery. Help them get started and move them out into the community. Thank you. Okay, it's now time. The voters are going to have a choice. They can either elect the incumbent, Mr. Matt, or they can elect me. If you believe that we can't do any better than what we're doing today, then you should, in fact, vote for him. But if you, like me, believe that we can do better in reducing spending, cutting taxes, that we can make sure that we have somebody that's willing and able and ready to open a local office in Lehigh Acres, to work to create high-paying jobs and attract light, green, environmentally friendly industry here, and to strengthen law enforcement and code enforcement and work collaboratively with them to improve our quality of life, as well as to beautify our area, then I would please ask for your support in both. I think during a campaign, you can quite often see how hard a person works. And many of you know in this campaign how hard I've worked. And I think that's a pretty good indicator as to how hard I would like to work for you as your employee, as your next county commissioner. Thank you for having me. I hope to have your support. Well, as I said a minute, I live over there in Alba. This has for me been a truly uplifting experience because of what I've seen in this community and the love for it, the commitment to it. And I look at people like Larry Guthridge back there and, and George Szymanski, who all 24-7 are volunteering and doing things, with, whether it's coach enforcement or whether it's uh, riding with the, with the deputies at night, putting their life at risk. People care about this community. It's a great place to live and to grow. Uh, for me to be able to share that commitment with you, has been very uplifting indeed, and I, and I thank you for that opportunity. I look forward to continuing that wonderful partnership if we may, as we make Lehigh even a greater place to live. Thanks so much, Frank Mann. Well, first of all, I want to make sure that you understand I'm not a politician. This is my first run for anything. I decided I love this county, and I wanted to do what I could to help the citizens. I feel my experiences, my abilities, I can do a lot to help minimize the size and cost of the government and to minimize its influence on your, on your business and also improve business, which we desperately need here to create more employment. Uh, also, I noticed that there's a lot of neighborhoods around the whole county where there's vacant and half-built houses. We need to work together with construction industry banks, nonprofit, realtors, so on, to get those houses filled. That's what I'm going to do. Thank you. January 29th, we had a vote in Lehigh, a mandate, if you will, to vote City Hood down. Sunny Haas, 8111 and Landon Drive. In October, the Board of County Commissioners will meet with planners that we hired to create a new vision of Lehigh. It's coming. This, that plan will drastically change Lehigh and the way it's going to be for the rest of our lives. A Lehigh man needs to walk the BOCC and the planners and our people through that process. It's very important. Local representation is very important. We have the right sheriff here. We need the right commissioner here. A vote for Sonny Haas in November is a vote for Lehigh. Thank you.
I'm John Glazier. Thank you very much for uh, this forum, to say the least. I know that all of us candidates appreciate coming out and speaking in front of the public whenever we can. Um, obviously, uh, in a minute, I'm not going to be able to go through much of uh, biographical, so if you would, please check the back table and check my website to find out who I am. I am the Democratic candidate for property appraiser in November. I'm not in the August primary. So if you would remember in November, Glazer for appraiser. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I guess I'll speak to you in a little bit. How's everyone doing tonight? I'd like to say thanks for everyone involved in putting on this uh, forum. It's great. The people that are left here, thank you for staying and listening to all of us. I'm running, uh, my name is Kyle Lee. I'm running for Lee County Property Appraiser as a Republican. Uh, the current system that's used is broke. Property countywide, especially in Lehigh, is over-assessed. We all know that. Um, if your property is over-assessed by $50,000, what good is a $50,000 homestead exemption? I've got charts, graphs, and numbers over at my table, brochures, and website, votekylelee.com. I love to talk to each and every one of you. I mean, it's not much time, but uh, I love to stay around and talk to everyone. I can change the system with your vote on August 26th. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Ken Wilkinson. I think most of you know me. I moved my family here in 1970. My boys went to this school as well as Riverdale. Let me just give you a quick rundown if I can. I was elected in 1980. Uh, Republican, uh, some of our personal accomplishments, Governor Pointing, Tax and Budget Reform Commission, President of Save Our Homes, Affordability Inc., Organizing Cameron, Enough is Enough. State Spending Limitation Initiative, Senior Banking Examiner, State of Florida, Division of Banking, Senior Vice President, Charter Bank, Lee Acres, Professional Property Appraiser, Division of Red Associates Award, Republican Party of Florida, Local Government Statesman of the Year, IAAO, Most Distinguished Assessment Jurisdiction Award, Rotary Four Way Test, Columbus International Foundation, Capital Honor, IAAO Public Information Award, Education, Florida Atlantic University, Bachelor's Degree, College of Business and Public Administration. Certified Florida Appraiser designation, nationally accredited instructor of assessment administration, past president, Lehigh Acres JC, Lehigh Raiders Pop Warner Football, Lehigh Chamber of Commerce, this chamber, service history, four years, active duty, one, day, one year in Vietnam. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Larry Samon. How is everyone tonight? I am proud to have raised two children here. And I also have two grandchildren. And you know, when Ken said he got her in 1970, I knew we had something in common. I just wasn't sure what. I am running for property appraiser because I believe I can do a better job. The property appraiser's office is customer service critical. We can do better. I guarantee it. Some argue that Save Our Homes has created an unequitable distribution of tax burdens. Do you agree? Why? Why not? Hi, John Glazer. Um, Save Our Homes uh, was brought in in 1992. It actually came in 1995. It was a great idea when it came in. Um, it's any, any time that you can limit government spending um, for rampant taxation, it is a good idea, plain and simple, all right? However, the question is, is it fair and is it finished? No. So, 3% um, Save Our Homes needs to be worked on more, it needs to be improved, it needs to be finished, it needs to be fair and equitable for all people in Lee County. When you look at it, the, the people that come to Lee County, that invest in Lee County from up north, people say, okay, you know, it doesn't apply to them, it shouldn't apply to them, they're buying a second house. When people retire here, they bring $60,000, that's a fact, $60,000 to our economy. So think of the investment that we have in our economy. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Kyle Lee, Republican for Lee County Property Appraiser. 
Save our homes is a good thing for two thirds of, of Lee County residents. But it gets back down to the fact, if your property is over assessed, what good is having a homestead, homestead exemption? If your property is over assessed $50,000, kiss your $50,000 homestead exemption goodbye. The property appraiser's office needs to do its job correctly in putting a fair market value on every property in the county. Most people don't realize, but even in a down real estate market, which we've had for the past two years, your Save Our Homes taxes are going up by 3%. If the, if the market assessed value of your property is more than the Save Our Homes value, your property taxes are going up in a down market, and that's the case for people countywide. Thank you very much. I wrote Save Our Homes. I love Save Our Homes. It has done what we intended beyond our expectation. It does not cause other properties' taxes to be higher. And let me explain. Assessments don't make taxes millages do. In 1980, when I took office, this county averaged 18.2 in millages. In 2006, it was 18.5. The only difference is we didn't have Save Our Homes tomorrow is the other non-Save Our Homes properties taxes would not be any less. Save Our Homes properties would be at the same rate. The proof is they don't lower the millage. So the only difference is the primary homeowner taxes would be at the same rate. Government should never be in the business to force people off of their property, particularly the primary residents. Thank you. Larry Sanamon. I'm not here for or against Save Our Homes. I think we all know it has unintended consequences, and I think we all have a difference of opinion as to what it does or doesn't do. I would, however, like to see a change, and that would be one homestead per family. That would take care of the inequities when a snowbird comes here and wants to own a house here. If you have one homestead per resident of Florida, it would take care of our snowbird problem. And when I say snowbird problem, snowbirds are not the problem. They're the answer to our economic woes. Thank you. If the appraiser's office is raising building values and the market is softening, prices going down, doesn't that already reduce our portability? On one hand, you say here is portability and then lessen its value to us. I challenge everyone not to take any of our word for it. Go on your go on the Lee County Property Appraisers website, leepa.org. Type in your address. Type in a neighbor's address. Type in an address from anyone anyone across the county. Click on the history chart and look at look at your uh, your land values and your building values. Right on the the Property Appraisers website, it says that building is the depreciating asset of the property. If you look at the building values on your in your history chart. You will see building values increase from 02 to 03, 03 to 04, 04 to 05, and 05 to 06. They're skewed. There's no modeling whatsoever when coming up with land and coming up with building values. Therefore, it leads back to properties being over assessed. And when you don't have a fair, true assessment on a property, what's the point of portability? Portability would be a good thing if assessments were correct, but they're not, and we need to do something about it. Thank you. I actually like these questions. I wrote portability as well. And you know, last year we wouldn't have had zero, we had zero portability. Yes, the question was if the market's going down, does that mean your amount of your portability will also decrease? And that's a fact. If you're not moving this year, you know, the markets will come back and your portability back up. But uh, portability is a good thing. The question I was getting the last few years, I certainly wasn't getting questions about people being taxed out. Now you have mobility in Florida, it's a winner. Uh, Larry Sandler. Uh Yeah, we can see the problem with portability. It's not really that there's a problem, it's just it's very hard for any of us to use portability right now. It's hard to sell your home, it's hard to buy another home because the mortgage market has tightened up. So really, they were expecting a huge real estate explosion with the portability and that hasn't happened. And uh, we're gonna have to just see it through. And uh, really, I think there's more underlying problems that we'll have to get to. But once we get back on a strong economic base, portability can work, but right now, with the economic situation, it's very tough. Thank you. Hi, Greg 
Thanks to Fur Fraser again. Uh, we're discussing about portability and um, up and the ups and downs of how that works. And yes, as the economy is going down, your portability is diminished, plain and simple. Uh, in addition to what we voted in on January 29th, uh, did you seem to happen to remember that everyone said that it would not impact the schools, that the schools would be held harmless? We have the number one dropout rate in the nation. We are now, I believe, about 54th funded in the nation. And because of portability, we lost $54 million to Lee County Schools this year. So, you make your own decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, please explain portability and recapture rules. In 1992, when I formed an organization here in Lee County called Save Our Homes, we passed it, the citizens passed it on the ballot. Uh, the when you, way it works in Florida, citizens change the Constitution. The legislature writes statutes to interpret what the citizens change. Then the department that oversees those statutes in our State Department of Revenue ad valorem taxes, they wrote rules to implement the statute implementing language to change the Constitution. In Florida, last year was the first year, any time a market value on a homestead property goes down, which we've reduced over 90 some thousand, no, 90 percent of the properties have gone down this year then the property appraisers are forced to go get 3% and add it in the portability, meaning the taxable value. I fought that. I went to an administrative judge, had a hearing in Tallahassee, we lost. Then we went to, before the government cabinet, I lost there. We put pressure on the legislature, I have a bill in there next year to get rid of it. Thank you. Thank you. Larry St. Amand. I'll, uh, talk about portability first, and it's true, a lot of people don't understand it. Uh, as I said, not many people are using it right now. But the thing you gotta know about portability, if you buy a bigger house, you can take all your savings with you. If you buy a smaller house, you can only take a percentage of that. Uh, basically, if you need help, that's when you call the property appraiser's office. They're there to help you. That's why I am running on the platform of better customer service. And I think that maybe the public hasn't been explained it, as well as they should have been. If I'm elected, I plan on having workshops, preferably on Saturdays or in the evening, where these things can be explained to our citizens because a lot of people that I talk to do not fully understand our taxation system. And on the recapture rule, that's very important. Basically, the legislature took it upon themselves to add the recapture rule after Save Our Homes was passed. The thing is, it's very important because right now we have a 10% cap on commercial properties. Thank you. Okay, portability and recapture. I think they've already pretty much said what it was about portability and recapture. Myself, the real question is, uh, since 3% Save Our Homes was done in 1995, your recapture rule was also done in 1995. Why did it take the incumbent 16 years, 16 years after Save Our Homes, to come up with portability and to go against the recapture rule? Incidentally, after the 16 years, the only time was right now when we got to our highest property values that this has become an issue. So why wasn't he proactive previously and working for you to protect you before property values went up 345% over the last few years. Thank you. Uh, Glazer for appraiser. Hello, Kyle Lee again. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to write any legislation or, or get any bills passed, but I'll tell you what, I, don't, I wouldn't forget what I got elected to do, and that's work for the Lee County residents and the voters of the county. Um, what most people don't understand, I, I like to hammer it home, is that in the down market, your property taxes are going up 3%. The reason for that is the system is broke. Sales are sales doubled and tripled in one year. The, take other, the other two approaches, cost of building, cost approach, income approach. 
Now, did cost of building double in one, two, three times in the same year? Did rents double twice in the same year? They did not. There's eight accepted ways by the Department of Revenue to assess a property. The current office only uses one. With using more ways, you get a more accurate assessment on the property. Therefore, portability and save our homes under the recapture would be better for everybody. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start with the wrap up. And that will be there. Larry Santamon, I'm going to do my closing here. I have done many hours of research and can tell you where the problems are and what my solutions are to them. We need improvement and I can get that done. Let me go to work for you, Lehigh Acres. Your vote on November 4th will be appreciated. Thank you again. Ken Wilkinson. Some of the endorsements I've received in this uh, campaign so far, Fort Myers News Press, Naples Daily News, Greater Fort Myers and the Beach Board of Realtors, Lee County Republican Executive Committee, BUPAC, Business People United for Political Action, and this one I love to read, and that's why I bring it with me. I got this as an email two nights ago, or on the 5th. Dear Ken, this email shall serve as an endorsement for your re-election this year. I have long admired your efforts to bring about good, efficient, and limited government to the people of Lee County and the state of Florida. I wish you great success in your efforts to continue to serve respectfully, Jeff Bush. Uh, many other, I've got 500 contributors right here who are supporters, and they're people that you know in your community. Now is not the time to train a new property appraiser. You've got a good property appraiser. Thank you very much. Hello, Kyle Lee. I'm not going to demand your vote, I'm going to ask for it. Please visit my website. Please come talk to me. I'll answer any question you have. Over 8,400 people petitioned the Value Adjustment Board, and they were told they were wrong. They were not wrong. Property is over assessed. Mr. Wilkins, Wilkinson has 28 years practice. You think you'd be able to get it right? I don't have all the accolades, I don't have all the recommendations from, from the governor. But I promise you, I can get it right, so I'd like to earn your vote. Please vote Kyle Lee, Republican Property Appraiser, on August 26th. Thank you very much. Well, once again, laser for appraiser. After you're through voting for Kyle Lee in August, I would like you to vote for me in November. <laughs> I have a few simple questions for you. One, do you feel that the assessments you've had are fair and equitable? Do you feel that you can sell your house for what it's appraised for? And do you feel that you're happy with your taxes? If you've answered no to any of those questions in your mind, then I would like you to vote for me on November 4th. I will fight for you. I will fight for your rights. I will work to, to fix what is wrong in the appraiser's office. And I need your vote in November to do that. I'm a businessman, not a politician. I will run the office like a business. Thank you very much. Glazer for a break.
I take care of their issue. I don't say, how can we do it? Um, excuse me, I don't say, can we do it? I say, how can we do it? Right now we have a good leadership team in place. We have stability, we have student, we have a student focus, which was not always in this, what was going on in Lee County. We keep the main thing, the main thing, and the main thing is student achievement. I would encourage you to go to the polls on August the 26th and vote for J.D. Dozier. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jane Kunkel. I'm proud to be here and asking for you to re-elect me on August 26th. August 26th does decide the school board election. When I came on the board, this district was in turmoil. If you remember, we had fire watchers in our buildings because the fire safety issues were neither addressed, reported, or fixed. We've done a total turnaround in this district over the last few years, and we're very proud of it. This year, 87% of our students, or our, our schools, received an A or B on the FCAT. 87% up from 71%. Over the last few years, we've had phenomenal growth. We built 23 new buildings and 17 build-outs, all under budget and on time and the